Hey, and welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. As you know, I am the host and founder, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me in the hot seat is a special guest by the name of Joseph, who goes by Joe Rocky Jr. And here is a bit about Joe. He has created a series of real estate businesses beginning in 2011. In this specific industry, 90% of his competition fails in the first year. Over a decade later, they are still going strong with no end in sight. In addition, economic success, he's created the podcast Father and Joe in 2017. The podcast tries to reunite people with their relationship with God, and he believes this reunification is essential for our society and individuals to find harmony and peace. So without further ado, please welcome Joe Rocky Jr. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. My pleasure, Joe. So we're, we are going to dive into getting to connect with you in a fun and personal way. And then we'll cover some aspects of what you're doing in the real estate space, as well as learning about your creativity podcast wise. So there are two options. I like to give my guests the ability to choose which one. So we could do an icebreaker or a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? I want to do the 10 questions. I've been excited <laughs> for this all day. I'm not going to lie. So we're playing rapid fire with Genesis and Joe. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Question numero uno. So with you being a podcast host, who is one guest, whether they're a celebrity or not, that you would love to have on your show? Um, I would love to have, uh, there's been a lot, uh, <laughs> <I guess because, laughs> um, I, I, I would love to have Reagan just cause I, I would like to hear the way that he viewed the world. Um, because especially with his interactions with the Pope and the way that he helped bring down communism. Um, but if they have to be alive, that, that might change it up a little bit. Um, I do think it would be cool to talk to Obama to see if he thought about the um, moral ramifications that he was unleashing with Obamacare. Um, I, I think that, that those two types of discussions are very similar in nature, but I, those are the two things I like to talk about if it were on my show. Awesome. Question two, as a believer and getting other people to believe and have a vertical relationship with Christ, what is a staple scripture that keeps you together? Um, I personally, um, I, I apologize. I don't know the quote off the top of my head in terms of the, the, the it's from wisdom, but it's actually the it's wisdom. It's, it's also quoted in John with in the beginning, there was the word and the word became man, meaning that, that Jesus was always planned. He wasn't just created because we wanted to be able to talk about him now that he was on earth, but it was always planned from the beginning. Question three, what's your favorite color? Uh, Ford blue. Oh, okay. That's definite. <laughs> That's specific. Yeah. The, just the, the blue they put on their trucks. I, that, I love it. Question four. What is your drink of choice? Coffee, tea, or something else? Line and Kugel. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait, say that again. Line and Kugel. It, it's basically lemonade beer at, at the end of the day. Oh, okay. Cause yeah, the, like, the summer huh? shandy. Yeah. <laughs> Question five. Are you the type of person that prefers to stay at home and cook in your kitchen? Or are you doing Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats? Oh, I, I'm definitely cooking. I, I don't believe in having fast food delivered to me. Um, if, if I am going to eat fast food, I, I go and get it. But, but I'd rather just us make it here. Question six. So in the beginning, you mentioned having a beautiful Bambino, so a little one. Mm -hmm. So what is one advice you would give to a new father? Um, I'm very impatient by my nature. So I, I would say you got to figure out a way to get over that. Um, the, the patience element of it, it, it is certainly important. And the other part is, is that 
he will feed your emotions off of your emotions um, more so than, than, than hers, than my wife's. So to be steady whenever things seem like everything's about to explode is very important. So I, I guess that would be the answer. Okay. <laughs> Seven. If you could hop in a time machine, Joe, and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? Don't wait. Um, just, just, just go for it now. Um, you'll, you're going to make mistakes regardless. Might as well get them out of the way early. Um, Question eight. What led you to embark upon the podcast journey? Well, whenever, uh, if people remember back to 17, um, the whole world basically divided themselves, at least America, divided themselves into two camps. Either we hate the orange guy or we love the orange guy. And the truth really was we should have been in the middle. Just he's a guy. Um, but regardless, there was all this division and chaos that was being created um, around the national conversation. And it was basically trying to rip apart all common ground. Basically, you were a CNN person or you were a Fox person. And we were trying to bridge the rift through the uh, answer that we've had for 2,000 years. Mm, okay. And nine, you get three random acts of kindness per day. What are your three random acts of kindness today? Well, I... Um, Obviously, they are the Muslim involved. My wife, <laughs> um, so um, so so I I, I try to to make things as easy as possible for her. She obviously just just um, gave birth and all that fun stuff not too long ago, but it, it, it's taking care of her and it's it's nothing really even complicated. I mean, aside from obviously making money for the household, um, but you know we also then just today just the basic stuff around the house, keeping it clean for her because she hates clutter, um, taking care of, of of Joseph here as his. He's eating so she can uh, sleep a little bit longer. Um, stuff like that. Nice. And I take it, is this y'all's first one? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah. we're right behind y'all. Yeah. <laughs> question 10. It's our pass or play question, Joe. And here are the rules. If you pass, our roles are reversed and you get to ask me a question. If you choose to play, I ask one last question to wrap up rapid fire. So do you want to pass or play? You've been great at asking the questions. I'll let you keep going. I'll let you keep my momentum here. Okie dokie. So question 10, you just won the lottery and everyone's like, woohoo, what are you going to do with all that money, Joe? But here's the kicker. You must donate to three charities of your choice first before the rest of the proceeds are released so what charities or nonprofits or are you contributing to well one of them is one i want to create which would be i i would like to create a, a school system um so so that would be that would be one um i i would give to uh the ronald mcdonald house because well obviously many charities focus upon the actual disease that someone's going through. And I'm certainly not diminish, diminishing that. It is often overlooked the other people involved in the family household, um, particularly the younger siblings that, um, you know, just because just your brother has something that, that's, you know, very bad doesn't mean that, that you're not going through something as well. And I think the Ron McDonald house does a very good job of, of addressing that, that real concern, um, which normally takes someone out of the, the shadows and kind of put some common in their life. Um, and then the, the, the last one would be here in Pittsburgh. There's um, a thing called the, the Joseph house, which essentially looks at individuals that are homeless and it tries to, to give them an ability to, to get careers. It, it particularly focuses um, on men that, that are homeless. So, so there, there's a lot of getting off of whatever made you homeless substance. Um, and then as well as essentially, re-getting yourself up to speed so you can go get a job so that that would be the, the three that i would start with and then um, if there were any money left over i would want to build a hotel um I, i've always had a desire to build a hotel and, and that's something that i would do amazing and thank you for sharing that joseph and for playing rapid fire with genesis so let's jump into the conversation now which is going to be unpacking your podcast father and joe and then we're also going to talk about you being in the real estate space so 
with real estate, that obviously came first in 2011. And then Mm -hmm. you jumped into podcast six years later. So with real estate, how big are you with partnering your faith within your real estate journey? And did you know real estate was going to be something that you went into? Well, I kind of fell into the real estate to to answer to the second half first. Um, I, I was before that I was working basically 80 hours a week coming out of that recession, just trying to sell people life insurance and annuities, which was a great time. It's the middle of a recession. Let's go sell everyone, you know, more things to put you in a stock market. So, um, so it, it, needless to say, it, it was very difficult three years, but I was also good at it. I, I was rookie of the year, the first year, underclassman the second year. Um, and third year I left. So, and the reason I left is I, I found myself in the back of a local real estate group here in Pittsburgh. And I realized that all of these guys here are working way less hours than me. Most of them are making way more than me and they're able to enjoy a night, even though all they're doing is complaining about their tenants, um, but they're able to enjoy a night out where they, if there's no boss yelling at them at the end of the day. So that's kind of what, what originally attracted me into the real estate space. And then as far as um, combining the faith with it, um, you know, I I honestly don't know how you can be a manager without, without that element, at least a long-term good, good manager, because there are so many parts that you need to do that people don't. So to unpack what I'm trying to say here is I've got like 30 thoughts in my mind. Um, Most managers want to take credit for everything and give love for nothing. At least most of the bad managers that people can recall off the top of their head that they're so glad they don't work for anymore. And if you do work for someone there, don't um, just flat out. Um, but so, so that, that, that arc of humility um, and temperance, which is the virtue I'm um, using the, the, the Catholic way of saying it, it, it is really important because when I first started you know, any business, you start really, there's going to be people who fail. I mean, you're, you, no one's cares as much about your business as you do. So you're going to have people that, that let you down and fail. So a big part of the temperance is not exploding at people um, if they're trying to do something good. Now, there's times it's warranted, don't get me wrong, but not unnecessarily freaking out at people. Um, and then the other side of that is, is one of the other uh, virtues that's necessary is courage, you know, to be able to step up and call people out that they should be doing something better and not. And um, you know, I, I was very bad at that in the beginning, um, as, as both of them really, and, and figuring that out as we went along and really developing into it, um, really became important. And that's part of how it was. And a lot of learning, uh, learning through failure, but it worked out here at the end and it's working out great. And it's amazing how you said you fell into it because that's kind of like what, what happens in life. It's like, we don't set out to do something, but sometimes like God, the Holy Spirit, some people say the universe for those who do not have a relationship with God, or they don't believe will lead you down the path you're supposed to be on. And then you begin to see why the puzzle pieces fit together as congruently as they do. And when you mentioned that you just kind of, you felt burnt out and you didn't want to do insurance and et cetera, you tried something else and it just stuck. And especially mm-hmm. during a time, like, because during that time we, we were getting out of the 08, 09 crisis. Then a few years later, you tap into real estate. So it could be a bit unknown because some, so many people got burnt, especially mm-hmm. for those who tapped into the market in order like to flip houses and make money. And they're like, oh my gosh, like, look what just happened. So then people are recovering from that. So they don't necessarily want to diversify and in, invest large amounts of money because they don't want to be burned again. That's all true. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, And then with real estate, it's so vast and it's so broad. And sometimes there are people out there who want to get into the real estate space, but they may not necessarily have the capital, Joe. And I'm Mm -hmm. sure you've experienced that. And there are different avenues you could do. Like there's a difference between commercial real estate and residential real estate. There's a difference between, you know, doing it via crowdfunding, using a turnkey provider, 
or you know having tangible re real estate and non tangible real estate someone just told me yesterday i believe is when i talked to him he has electronic real estate and i was like what does that look like and he was talking about using atm machines and other things like that and i thought that was pretty pretty cool because that's also another way for people to drive in passive income so when you started um did you find a business mentor or someone that was already involved in the real estate space that they took you under their their wings and give you kind of like the blueprint since you did fall into it yeah yeah it, like i said when i was in that pittsburgh group i ended up pairing up with with one of the guys who at the time wasn't running it but now is running it um so um he we, we did a couple of flips together we, we, we you know we signed an agreement that we do a couple of flips together and we did those and like i said it it, it, it worked out it, it was it was a learning process it, it certainly kept me through um the beginning like the, the first flip was a complete and utter debacle but the second one more than made up for it so so keeping it in there and learning from it and, and making it grow was certainly an important element of, of the process um but i started like i said i started with the flips but the real goal was to get to the rentals and, and the passive income that, that that you discussed there and that was the the entire goal so so we use the flips to basically get the, the big capital to be able to go and, and buy the rentals and then you know refinance them and later in life. Because once you have enough of them, you can just keep refinancing them and using the bank's money to do it. And the issue was then was they, in they being the banks, in general lumped landlords in with subprime um, uh, investing. So in the very beginning, you basically couldn't get a loan from a traditional bank for a real, like an actual legitimate tenants in your good house, not a flip, which I know is broken and I got to then fix up. We had to go private equity for that. But for the, for the standard, you know, I got a tenant in here, they're paying a grand a month. I don't got to do anything. Why are we, uh, why are we not getting a loan here? That was very troubling. And then the whole thing spun on its head and then we got told that we weren't allowed to evict tenants and it's estimated that nationwide 40% of tenants, once they found out, stopped paying altogether. Um, and it, not only did they stopped paying the rent, they stopped paying all their utilities. So the rest of us will have to pay our increased electric bills for the next six years nationwide, um, all because they were told they wouldn't get evicted. Um, and then obviously each state dealt with that differently. Um, each state was allowed to turn it on on their own pace but that was the initial starting point. And the longer your state was turned off in terms of not being allowed to do evictions, the worse the story is. So. Wow. And I do remember that. And I know some, I live in Texas and so, you know, they don't play with certain things that some people joke and call it <laughs> the wild, wild west down here. And there were some apartment complexes that did find a, a workaround that because there was like a few tenants who said, oh, I don't have money to pay my rent. But then when you live in an apartment, if you order from Amazon, some of those boxes can't fit in your mailbox. So they're taking mm -hmm. the boxes to the office. So they're like, oh, okay, so you have money to order stuff on Amazon, but you don't have money to pay your rent. So they use that as a leverage to get those people to pay for their rent. If not, I think they were eventually like evicted because there were so many people that were abusing the system and tr just trying to run game. Mm -hmm. And it and it wasn't fair for those who were doing Airbnb or, or rental properties or within the real estate space, because not only did they have that asset, but they have other assets that they're trying to manage as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still got to pay your mortgage and all that stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's certainly amazing how different states looked at it. And, and at the end of the day, the first thing when you said that was God bless Texas, I wish everyone was like you guys. Um, because, you know, Pennsylvania is, is the fifth worst landlord state in terms of when they look at laws favoring landlords versus tenants. Um, we're fifth worst. So, so basically, if, if a tenant wants to live free, and they are experienced with manipulating the legal system, they can do it. Um, now, over the years, I've learned a lot from lawyers about how to prevent that, but it's still something that for people who have never done this before um, in Pennsylvania, it can be very eye-opening and, and a big deterrent from entering the game. So knowing what you know now, do you think that you'll move from like the residential side of real estate into like commercial side or which side do you think is more lucrative for like a 
entrepreneur and someone who wants to have a um, hands-off approach, but just really bring in that revenue and have it be a consistent cash flow. Because we all know real estate can have its ups and downs Mm -hmm. as the pendulum swings. Yeah. So, um, so right now, I mean, again, it depends upon how messed up your state was and how long they were turned off for, uh, because this, like I said, this, this situation is bigger for the more you were turned off. Um, and, and when I say turned off, we weren't allowed to do evictions till February and the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh is still protesting that we're allowed to do evictions now. So, um, I, I, I was in February, the first day of February, the courts were open to, to evict someone. I didn't get the house back till the end of March. So, for reference. Uh, but that being said, there are, um, using the same easy math, if, if you had five units and you had four, uh, um, two of them not paying, you're never getting back a, a, a property after you evicted someone and having it be rentable again. You're going to need to fix it. So hopefully your other three units were able to cover the cost for you ongoing. But at the end of the day, you don't have enough money to fix up both of them and you might not have the desire to because you might have been broken by tell, being told that your business wasn't essential and you don't want to do this. And that, that's a very real problem that happened to a lot of guys that we just don't even talk about that you were told you weren't essential and you don't want to do it anymore. So from looking at basic supply and demand economics, you're going to have a ton of properties that are in rental areas that are being offloaded because they need to be. You have less capital to buy them from it from a dollar standpoint, and you have less people having the incentive and the desire to do it um, from the existing landlords. So said another way, supply is going up really high, demand's going down really low, uh, prices are going to fall through the floor. And this has got to start in the rental areas. You know, the, you think about your city, like the bad areas of town that it's all landlords. Well, that's where it'll start. Um, so there, there's a great opportunity if you're willing to, to do that. Um, I personally play in the areas that are in the in-between zones. Like it might 10 years from now be all rental. It might be a recovered area. We don't know yet. That's where I tend to go. Um, so the long story short is that's great opportunity if you're willing to step in, but you also have to recognize that it's going to be exactly the same way it was back in 09. You're not going to be able to refinance these things easily. And it's going to take forever because all the banks just saw what happened to the landlords and yes, there were many landlords that kept their payments going, but there's also many landlords that said, well, I'm not getting paid. I'm not paying you. And then once that happens to a bank and they're already not allowed to foreclose on anyone, which is the bigger part of this problem. Um, once that happened, they're not going to give out lending to any landlords and, and just nationwide, you're going to have a big crunch on that availability of capital, which also slows down the whole process of having capital to go buy these rental properties. So if you're looking to enter the, enter the situation, the first thing I would recommend is pair up with someone who knows how to be a landlord because most people have no idea how to do it. And there's a tons of ways to get burnt. Um, I primarily do residential. And the reason I do residential is because a lot of the headaches of being a landlord, I have figured out how to get rid of, and that can be its own three-hour conversation, if not more. That was a five-year experience figuring that out. And there are guys who have figured this out. So so what I would say is pair up with someone who knows how to be a landlord. Um, if you have a couple of extra dollars, you know, buy some properties together, see how it goes. Um, full well knowing that you're ultimately putting your trust in a tenant that they will keep their word. Um, that is a intrinsic element of being a landlord. Does Will the tenant keep their word or not? And silver lining to a bad situation we just found out everyone who's not going to so if you saw anyone that got evicted in 21 or 22 i don't care what state they were in i'm never letting you be my tenant that's just flat out period um and there's nothing wrong with that because it's on your permanent record um in pennsylvania that's with you for seven years um that that you were in a hearing so for the next seven years you're at least in my mind un uh tenable. It's like the, whatever the equivalent of being un, unemployable is. I mean, that, that's what you are. So and not to mention, and then, then this is the other part of that equation, speaking directly to that group, you just had mass evictions because the magistrate and the judges will still be able to do two years worth of evictions in two months. Like they can do it. Um, but the houses won't be ready in time. 
So now there's about, I don't know, 500 to one ratio of tenants looking for a place to livable locations. Um, so the rents are going to go through the ceiling as the value of the properties fall through the floor, which makes your return on investment grow exponentially. But it, it will make people very angry about the, uh, the landlords moving forward as, as this plays out, because it's the only way it can go. And that will be the next three years of our lives. Amazing. And thank you for adding that. And now I want to jump into your podcast a bit. And as we begin to wind down, and then we'll wind down with the call to action. So tell us a little bit more about running your podcast, Father and Joe, on top of, you know, you doing what you do, like full time within the real estate space. Because I know podcasting is a job in itself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) depending on the frequency you do it. Yeah, so we only come out once a week. So for for me and father, we, we everything's pre recorded. We we do um, basically thirty minutes, twenty thirty minute shows. So two hours a month. So so we're we're able to squeeze it in. It that regards, it, it's it's pretty nice. But we look at the value that we're creating. You know, we every episode looks at both real world situation, but pragmatically, what do you get as someone who's actually going to go through this? Because For better or worse, we live in a society that if I'm not getting anything out of it, I'm not going to do it. So we look at what is the pragmatic, tangible benefits, as I kind of outlined when I answered your question about the faith in creating my business. We we outline stuff like that all the time. And we also deal with ethical questions that like, how, how should I feel about this? Like this crazy guy just started a war for no reason. Like the whole faith is about creating life. And this guy is actively killing people. Are we like allowed to root for him to die? Like, are we allowed to root for someone to take him out? Like, like, how does that work? So when you look at, we look at ethical questions like that. um, And also like, you know, like I said, the pragmatic, what is the benefits of if I truly took this to heart and if my neighbors took this to heart, what would the world look like? Awesome. And then, so with the podcast right now, it's just um, you and father, or do y'all also interview other people? Or is it just a conversation between you and father bringing, bringing together real, real life situations and just having a conversation style dialogue? It's that. Yeah. It, it's just me and father every time having conversations back and forth. Okay. Awesome. And now let's jump into the call to action, Joe. So what is your call to action for the listeners as well as the viewers today? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would invite everyone to take a listen to it. It's literally the words father and Joe, as straightforward as can be. Um, you know, th- that's what we would recommend to come to, uh, because there really is a lot of tangible benefits of, of living a, a better virtuous life, which does come through. And basically, anytime you see someone, you wish your neighbors were doing and I can tell you that. Um, Amazing. And then for those who are interested in learning more or picking your brain from the real estate side, do you have a website or where do you primarily hang out on social media? So on social media, you can get me on LinkedIn, obviously, um, but I'm one of like 5,000 Joe Rockies. So what I tell people to do is if you, if you want to directly contact me and know you're getting to me, our email is 412homes at gmail.com. 412 is the area code for where I live. So it's not original. 412 homes at gmail.com. You can send something directly to me um, and we can go from there. Amazing. And Joe, I want to thank you so much for coming into the GEMS podcast community, sharing your knowledge around real estate, and then also talking a bit about your podcast that you're doing with with father and just having a pragmatic style to get more people to see things from a different vantage point and just get a new perspective so they could broaden their horizons and deepen deepen their relationship with God if that is who they want to follow audience I will link Joe's um, email address in there as well as the link to his podcast so you can actually check that out and support what he has going on on his end don't forget to like comment and subscribe we're found on 40 plus platforms you could also see this video on our youtube channel by typing in gems g-e-m-s 
with Genesis Amaris Kemp, and you'll see this video as well as others. And my big ask for you is to continue to support the mission of the podcast, which is to bring content that is educational, inspirational, and motivational, while we also weave in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And we are looking for brand sponsors to keep this podcast going. So if that is you, you can have your products, your brands and services heard right here on the platform where we are ranked in the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com. So find more info by going to my website, genesisamariskemp.net or sending me an email to genesisamariskemp at gmail.com. Until the next guest, next segment, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day.